Renovations on a heritage building in New Plymouth have set tongues wagging after they revealed signage dating back to when the city only had four-digit phone numbers. Stories have emerged about a fish and chip shop owner who mysteriously disappeared, any number of liaisons at Penny's, the upstairs restaurant, and a secret smoking den under the stairs of one shop. Our Taranaki Whanganui reporter Robin Martin has more. Grocer James McNeil had the reinforced concrete building constructed in 1925 at the cost of about £3,000. McNeil never occupied the building, which originally carried his name, and instead its tenants included a broad range of businesses, including James Roach's fruit shop and William Ravel's hairdressers, that were fixtures right through until the 1950s. Bruce Neal is the current owner of the building on the corner of Devon and Elliott Streets, which has been known as the East End Building since 1939. He says the signs came to light during safety improvements. Yeah, as, as layers came off, it just sort of revealed itself and then we are like, said to the boys on Friday, let's just unwrap the lot and leave it there for the weekend just to let everyone have a look. And God, people have been ringing up, phones been going crazy, there's people stopping and taking photos. So it was cool to just do for a few days. Mr Neal says one of those phone calls involved the fish and chip shop. Yeah, 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 apparently uh, yeah, the husband mysteriously disappeared. That's about all we know. Uh, there isn't really a... Yeah, it was a, um, I guess, a husband and wife kind of a fatty and skinny relationship. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he just either did a runner or he ended up in the, in the deep fryer. Who knows? We'll never know. Fashion and gift shop Shine now occupies the ill-fated chippy space. Its owner, Kelly Whitaker can remember visiting it as a child. I remember coming here as a kid and going upstairs, was it called Penny's? The restaurant upstairs, I can remember going there for dinner but and coming to the shop I'm in now, which was a fish and chip shop. Next door was Shakely's, the pizza place. I remember, I'm a hairdresser from a long time ago, so I remember the hair salon next door. Ms Whitaker says she would have liked the signs to remain up, but will repurpose some of them instead. Yeah, I think a few of us are hoping to um, get a, a few of the signs. I'll use them in here because it goes with my f look on my back wall. So, yeah, tidy them up and put them on the back wall. Nikki Gibbons is the owner-operator of the Meraki Hair Collective. She's still getting over the fact the signs revealed her salon has been a hairdresser's for almost a century. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, we, put it, we personally put a picture of it on our Facebook page because our shop happened to have a sign for a hairdresser from the 1920s from it. So it's actually been a hair salon since then as well. Um, even before we were in here, it's been, say, three salons that I know of, and then before that would have been this WJ Ravel. Something about this space needs to be a hair salon, I think. Miss Gibbons lives in a flat above the shops and says it's not uncommon for visitors to say they remember when it was a restaurant or the parties that used to be held on the awning. Meanwhile, Mr Neil says the building has a habit of revealing secrets. Yeah, there was the little old lady Anne in the laundrette downstairs. She was here for about 30-something years. And uh, it wasn't till after she died and we were cleaning out that we discovered she had a little cupboard under the stairs where she used to hide out and smoke cigarettes. And that's when she ultimately died of lung cancer. Mr Neil says he's going to use some of the signage himself and display other elements of it at his yard. Motihotaka o te ahi pōnei. Call Robin Martin a ho.